How long have you been doing entomology? Um, three years. Three years. So you have a pretty impressive collection here. Uh, which insect is your favorite? Um, probably the water scorpion. Let me find out that. Um, it's right there. And my second favorite is probably that one, that beetle. That is a very nice beetle. So are all these insects from around your house or uh, have you collected insects in other places? I've collected this one in Cape Cod. Is there uh, any insect right now that you, that you don't have that you want to have? Um, I would really like a Luna moth. Do you have a favorite order of insect? I like Lepidop Lepidoptera. And today we're going to talk a little bit about basic entomology collecting equipment. If you're starting in 4-H, you really want to start by getting a copy of the Know Your Insects Guide. This is available from the 4-H Resource Directory or from your county extension office. This details everything you need to know from starting a collection to taking it to fair. And what do you have here, Gabe? You tell us a little bit about your net. All right, so what this is, is this is uh, just an aerial net. Uh, so this would be used for catching insects that are flying through the air. So for example, for chasing things like butterflies, uh, dragonflies, or bees. That's great. And if you catch them, uh, after you get them in the net, what do you do with them? So what you want to do is you want to have a killing jar ready. So what a killing jar is, is just a, um, <clears throat> like a uh, glass jar with some plaster in it and then you can either put a little bit of alcohol or poison in the bottom and the, the plaster will just uh, absorb the moisture and then uh, the fumes will kill the insect and what you want to do is just um, try and get the killing jar under the net yes and get the insect into the uh, the killing jar and then quickly get the um, lid back on the jar. Oh, that's very good. And if uh, you happen to be someplace where you don't have access to a killing jar, uh, can you just keep it into a regular jar until you have access to the kill jar? Or can you even freeze it? Is that an option? Yes, I mean, those would both be options. Uh, freezing is definitely uh, very another very good way to kill them. Okay, great. Well, now we've got uh, some insects caught from our uh, nets and into killing jars. Talk a little bit about how we would pin them and preserve them. So, first thing you need is some insect pins. Can you tell us a little bit about the pins, Sam? Yep. They, these, you can never use non-special kind of pins. These are specially made because they're galvanized. My dad once had a collection and it rusted because he, uses the wrong, he used the wrong pins. And uh, if you need to collect uh, insects with these pins, if you need to pin them, you can buy these pins from BioQuip, or many uh, extension offices will have these uh, available. Uh, what is this, Sam? Can you tell me a little bit about this? It's a spreading board, generally used to, used to spread Lepidoptera, aka butterflies and moths. It's just to show off their wings. It's just a standard in entomology. Your insect. Tell me what exactly this is, Sam, and how do you how do you use it? This is used for pinning your insect, getting it at the right height on the pin. This step is used for that. This is also used for where you, the the label of where you were caught you caught it, and this one is used for the insect number label, so you can put it in your insect log. All right, this case is used to display your bugs. That's pretty apparent, but. It's important to have a nice case, I, I always think, because the presentation of your bugs often means the, the difference between a yellow ribbon and a, ri and a blue.